So it is early in the NBA season at the time we're recording this. It's been only seven games so far, but God, the Milwaukee Bucks fucking suck. I mean, it hurts for us as big Dame fans, but at the same time, they kind of deserve it for hiring Doc fucking Rivers. <laughs> Before we start talking about the Bucks, if you have already, make sure you leave this video a like, give us a subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you never miss out on one of our videos. So like I said, at the time of this recording, the Bucks have dropped their sixth consecutive game to drop to one and six on this season. They're second straight to Cleveland. Haven't won a game since opening night where they beat Philadelphia, and that was a Philadelphia team without Joel Embiid or Paul George, so I'm not putting much stock into that. And over that six-game losing streak, you know, they've lost some games to some good teams, Boston, Memphis, twice to Cleveland, but they also got beat by double digits at home against Chicago, a game that they surrendered 133 points, and they lost by 13 on the road in Brooklyn. A horrible start to the season for Milwaukee. Milwaukee. You know, recording this on Monday night, they just lost to Cleveland. They are bottom of the Eastern Conference standings, and they are tied with Utah for the worst record in the entire league. And they get the Jazz on Thursday, battle of the one and six teams. And even if they do win that game, I mean, beating the one and six Utah Jazz at home is not going to inspire much confidence about, oh, this team's, this team's turning around, right? <laughs> Part of it, I mean, it has been a fairly difficult schedule. You play the Cavs twice, who are unbeaten. You played the Celtics on the road. You had to play the Grizzlies on the road probably should have beat the Nets and the Bulls and their schedule does open up a bit after this they have like a long eight of nine games thing at home in November some winnable games so they could turn things around but so far it's been awful and for us it's conflicting to see like on one hand we want to see Dame win we love the dude he did so much for the Blazers while he was here but on the other hand the Blazers got their picks they got their pick in 2029 just outright and then they got swaps in 28 and 30 but it's almost like they're falling apart like too early too like, quickly like give it a couple more years then fall apart milwaukee they're already doing it in dame's second year bottom out in 2027 not, yes. not right now so how did the bucks get into this situation well quick recap last offseason was one of massive change for milwaukee they suffered an embarrassing first round loss to miami that cost mike budenholzer his job and like i've made this point a couple times in a few other videos about the bucks but losing in the first round as the one seed is never good at the same time that miami team it's not not like they got bounced in the next round by New York in five games. Like that team went on to the NBA finals. They beat New York. They beat Boston. The only thing that stopped them was Jokic in the Nuggets. So yes, it was bad to lose that team in the first round, especially in five, but with the benefit of hindsight, probably not as bad as it initially seemed, right? I mean, also Giannis got injured. He had that back injury during that series. Game five, they probably should have won. Like who knows if he doesn't get injured, if Jimmy's just not torched and doing whatever Jimmy was doing that playoffs. But yeah, it felt like an overreaction. You hire Adrian Griffin to be your next head coach. I mean, he was a 10-year veteran, had a lot of experience as an assistant, but still you're hiring a guy who has no head coaching experience. And then a few months later, you make the massive trade to go and get Damian Lillard. I completely get going and making the deal. Like in some ways it felt like that team had kind of peaked. It didn't feel like going into next season, they kept the same roster. They were going to be a championship team necessarily. If you have a chance to get a guy like Dame who's coming off maybe his best season of his career it makes sense but you're giving up Drew Holiday you give up Grayson Allen and then you give up any flexibility you have in terms of first round picks until the 2030s it was still a huge risk you get Dame you felt good about it they were immediately talked about as a title favorite but still a big risk given Dame's age and his contract yeah and I mean to be fair the Bucks season if you're just looking at the standings started pretty well I mean 30 and 13 after 43 games tied for the second second best record in the Eastern Conference behind only Boston and they make the decision to fire Adrian Griffin. Now the Bucks defense had gotten significantly worse from the prior season and people were pointing the fingers at Adrian Griffin instead of maybe pointing the fingers at Dame as they probably should have. I mean you swap out Holiday who's one of if not the best point guard defender in the NBA for Dame who's one of if not the worst point guard defenders in the NBA so that might have had something to do with it and I mean there were rumblings about Griffin not being on good terms with, you know, his star players or most of the roster. But I mean, still, you fire a guy who had won almost 70% of his games as your head coach, and the guy you replace him with is 
Doc Rivers? The guy who got run out of Los Angeles, who got run out of Philadelphia for consistently under-delivering in the playoffs. That's the guy you pegged as like the replacement that's going to lead you to the promised land? I don't know if I'll ever understand this one. It just felt like such just a panic hire, like you're doing everything mid-season, you're calling up Doc who's calling games for ESPN. Like they fully panicked. If this would have happened the off season, like maybe you have some more time. You can look at other candidates across the league who are maybe assistant coaches or something. And everyone knew like when it happened, it wasn't going to work. Like yeah. we all saw it coming. And so far it hasn't worked. You finished 19 and 20 with Doc. You get bounced in the first round by the Pacers. Granted, they were heavily injured. Of course, Giannis missed that series. That Pacers team just had their number that season. But it brings you to this season. And so far, clearly Doc ain't the guy and no one is surprised. Yeah, I mean, this is not like the 2016 Cavaliers where you fired David Blatt, but you clearly had a replacement. Like you had Ty Lue. Like, this is the danger with firing a guy mid-season. You have to have a replacement in mind. I mean, technically, they did have a replacement, Terry Stotts, but remember they fired him after, like, a week of training well, camp? Yeah, because he and Adrian Griffin <laughs> got in a screaming match. Yeah. But even if they had brought in Terry, it's like, we know what Terry is. Like, yeah. Terry is good, not great. Can't get you over the hump. I mean, even going into this season, like, we both acknowledged when we did our prediction video that we were a little nervous for them. You know, it kind of felt like maybe this was their last chance to win with this core, but at least me personally, I still thought they were definitively one of the top four teams. And I figured you get Dame, Giannis, Middleton, all back, all healthy. I low-key thought they had some decent off-season additions. I mean, Torian Prince is a solid 3 and D guy. I've always been a big fan of Gary Trent. I know they still have Doc, and they did bring in Darvin Ham, which is just like storm clouds over your arena when you just bring him in. So I, maybe I should have known better, but I, I was just holding out hope that Dame and Giannis maybe could overcome that. And so far, they just haven't. I mean, you beat Philly on opening night but again no MB, no pg so you better beat them and then you follow that up with four straight losses all of them by double digits you surrender no less than 115 and even in that game you lose by 13 in their past few games it felt like maybe they could get back on track that boston game they were playing them tough but it's boston you know boston just gonna get hot they were torching from three then against cleveland those back-to-back -back games it really looked like at least in one of them they were gonna get the win First off, the game at home, you have a great start. You led by as much as 16 in the first quarter. Cavs fight back, but still Dame knocks down a mid-range jumper. Nine seconds to go, gives the Bucks a one-point lead. But then Donovan Mitchell breaks their hearts with that mid-range shot, puts the Cavs back up, and then Dame gets one last look. I don't think it would have counted anyways. Yeah, I don't think it would either. I mean, Dame and Giannis, this was their best game together of the season. There was one player, I remember, where Giannis had like a behind-the-back pass to Dame for three, which was one of their best like moments together as a duo it kind of felt like if you could have won this game you got Damon Giannis putting up great games together it would have been a great momentum win to give the Cavs their first loss of the season but Donovan Mitchell just ripped their hearts out I mean Dane gives you 41 with 10 threes and Giannis gives you a 34 16 and 9 and you lose albeit against a really good Cleveland team but still you, you think if Damon Giannis go for that you win that game and the next game this time on the road in Cleveland a lot like the first in some ways but also different in other ways like this time it was the Cavs who jumped out to a huge lead. They had a 19-point lead just before halftime. Milwaukee, though, they battled back, took the lead right before the end of the third quarter, and then after A.J. Green hits a three with six minutes left, they're up by eight on the road in Cleveland, and at this point, I'm watching the game. I'm thinking, okay, you know, they're gonna they're gonna get one finally, right? This could be a huge momentum win on the road in Cleveland. No Giannis. Still, you go on the road, you get a win, but Cleveland immediately rips off a 10-0 run. Now I'm left like, oh, f***, you know, they're gonna, they're gonna f*** it up, but then Dame ties it up, hits a three, gives them the lead again, and now I'm back on Okay, they're gonna get this one, right? Finally. Finally! And then the Cavs score eight straight and they beat Milwaukee again. Dame goes for 36 on 11 and 12 shooting. Bobby Portis fills in for Giannis, gives you 21 and 18, and AJ Green hits seven threes off the bench, and you lose again. And really, like, this team has all the same problems as last year, and now they even have a couple new ones. First, you gotta start with the defense. I mean, we basically know this. Any team with Damian Lillard on their roster is gonna suck at defense. There was a couple years when he's still in his 20s, when we had, like, Chief and Aminu, where we were all right on defense. And we were but, average at best. <laughs> yeah, we were average average, but Dame just sucks at defense. He's older now, not as quick. You know, he's got some injuries at this point and they aren't getting any healthier. Like Middleton has not played the entire season. Apparently the quote from Doc was like, he's getting closer, but he's not there yet, which who knows what the hell that means. I mean, getting closer can mean he's like, he's gone.
gone from 20% healed to 25% healed. Yeah. So he's getting closer, but he's still a long ways away. So until they actually put a timetable on when this guy's going to be back out on the court, I'm not going to feel good about it. And then you look at the rest of the roster. I mean, Dame, Giannis, Middleton, Brooke Lopez, Bobby Portis, Planet Pat, Torian Prince, all are over the age of 29. All aren't getting any younger. And it kind of goes hand in hand with like the defensive point. It's like Brooke Lopez is, you know, a great interior defender, but he's 36. Can't move like he used to. Dame obviously can't move like he used to. So a lot of the time on defense, they're just relying on Giannis to basically just cover for everyone. You know, he can't maintain that level for an entire game. And the biggest thing is like, unlike last year where their defense was really bad, but their offense was like borderline elite. This year, their offense has just been very pedestrian. I mean, Giannis and Dame are still putting up pretty good numbers. Giannis is averaging 31 and 12 on 63% shooting. Dame's putting up 26 on basically his career averages shooting the ball. But man, they are really missing Chris Middleton as that consistent third score. Because right now they're leaning on Bobby Portis, Brooke Lopez, and Torian Prince to make up the scoring. And then beyond that, you have guys like Planet Pat and Gary Trent who were supposed to, you know, spread the floor for you and give you some threes. And they're both shooting in the mid 20s from three this year. Yeah, the supporting cast just isn't great. Like you got your stars, but then outside of it, like you said, like Gary Trent, Planet Pat have not been good. AJ Green, you know, just had that good game. Maybe he can build off of that, but they just don't have a lot of like legit rotation guys. And as we've highlighted in previous videos, you need deep teams who can shoot and can play defense like the Boston Celtics have, like OKC has to win titles. That's another thing I noticed. Like when I was looking at the basketball reference page, they're really only playing like six or seven guys. Yeah. Like after that, it's like, oh, maybe another guy will get in for like 10 minutes, but they're playing their top six guys like 25, 30 plus minutes a game. And then it kind of falls off a cliff. I mean, reinforcements might be coming though. I've heard they're targeting Lonnie Walker so he could change everything. But yeah, the supporting cast just isn't there. And if you're going to have the bad defense with Dame, you have to have an elite offense. And right now they don't have that either. So, I mean, I don't have a ton of faith with this team. And on top of that, like the Dame and Giannis chemistry, like I mentioned in that one Cavs game, they kind of had it going a bit, but even then it's always looked very clunky together. I think it comes down to you have two guys very used to having the basketball. Neither of them are really great off ball. Like you'd expect Dame to be a lot better off ball as a shooter. And sometimes he does have his catch and shoot moments, but he still isn't great in that role. Like on paper, it was, oh, the pick and roll together. Giannis is this inside score. Dame plays outside. It seemed like a perfect fit, but yeah, it's been extremely clunky. That's the best way to put it. Then you got Doc who, like, I don't particularly know what the solution with this team is, but I know it's not Doc. My only question is, can they really fire him before the end of this season? Unless it goes like catastrophically wrong. Like if they're 10 and 30, yeah, fire him at that point. But if they're just kind of treading water, with how dysfunctional this team seems to be right now, do you really want to tack on a second mid-season coaching change in as many years to this whole situation they've got going on? And like, who do you replace him with? Monty Williams? is out there, but I'm sure he's fine just to keep cashing those checks from Detroit. Throw a Hail Mary out there with Mike D'Antoni. <laughs> just double down on your offense. There's a, oh, decent There's a decent argument any of those guys would be better than Doc since he's 21 and 30 since he got there. But again, like another midseason coaching change I think could rock the boat even more than it's already being rocked. There's no shot they can do that. Like just wait till the off season if you're going to do it. I think you got to ride it out for the rest of the season. But God damn, if he doesn't turn things around here soon, like if we're getting to like a 1 and 13 record, 2 and like 12 or something like that. I might fire him at that. Point. You at least had to have the conversation. Like I said, they got a lot of home games coming up. I was looking at the schedule. A lot of winnable games. I could see a point where they're getting back to 500 real soon. But at the same time, I don't really know how you fix this team. I could see them being like a dangerous six seed. Like, oh, we don't want to play the Bucks. They got Giannis and Dame. But at the same time, I don't think they're getting home court. In terms of really improving the roster, you don't have control of your first round pick until 2031. You don't really have any any good young players that anyone really wants, you're strapped when it comes to your salary cap. And then even if you want to like shake things up, you're like, okay, the damn experiment didn't work. You're not getting sh him. Like, I love you, Dame. We'll take you back in Portland if you just want to come back. But he's on a horrific contract. Guards at his age, unless your name is Steph Curry, just really don't age well. And what other team out there that like, you take into account the salary cap situation would really even want him? Like, what team needs a point guard? I don't know if Miami would want to even do it at this point. I was just about to say, ring up Miami again. And I mean, see you if can still be try, interested. but I think Miami's kind of turning the page and maybe wants to rebuild here soon. I don't know if there's really one team that would really make sense for a Dame trade. 
trade. Yeah, I, I agree. I think the best thing that you could do, honestly, is just be patient. And that's not like a really inspiring answer. I'm sure it's not the answer that a lot of Bucks fans probably want to hear, but it's like, what else can you do? I know you've dug yourself a hole at the start of the season, but there's still 70 plus games of basketball left to be played. Like, just be patient, you know, see if you can get Middleton back, see if, you know, Dame and Giannis can turn around. And like, if anyone's saying blow it up, you know, trade Giannis, trade Dame, just start over again. It's like, they don't have their pick until 2031. They don't have any incentive to be bad. Like both Damon Giannis are under contract for this year and next year. Middleton's got a player option for next season, but given his injury history and his age, I wouldn't be shocked to see him pick it up. So you probably can keep your big three together for this season and next season. Just stay the course. My big this brain big idea brain is brain. if it gets really, really terrible, fire Doc, ah. bring in Mike D'Antoni and just pray <laughs> to God that he can fix your <laughs> offense. That's my, I don't think it's going to happen at all. I mean, from the reality show NBA perspective, that would be amazing. What I'm hoping happens is they fire Doc ah. and then Darvin Ham is back no. up there. <laughs> hands in his pockets, not making coaching adjustments. <laughs> God, it's just a mess I thought, there. I thought you said you wanted Dame to win. Well, I mean, <laughs> I want Dame to win, but I also want to grab the popcorn and see a funny show here too. Uh, like, come on now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's the video, guys. Do you think the Bucks can be fixed this year? I'd love to hear what you have to say in the comments down below. If you enjoyed the video, consider leaving it a like as it really does help us out. And while you're here, why not check out some of our other videos as well? And don't forget to subscribe to Synthetic Sports.